In this market update, I'm going to be talking about why this is not a good time to invest in the S&P 500. Hi, Jim Gore from Thor Wealth Management. Well, when you've been in the business as long as I have, you see some things that happen that repeat. And we're starting to see that right now where investors just want to put their money in index funds, specifically the S&P 500 index, just like they did back in 1999. However, we think that's a big mistake and we think that in the future, in the next several years, active management is going to outperform the S&P 500. Why? Look at this first chart here. The market concentration, they're looking at the top 10% market capitalization of companies and this is going back to the 30s and we are at the second highest concentration we've ever been. We're higher than we were in 1999. So 75% of the company's market weight is just in the top 10% of companies. There's a huge amount of companies that are being overlooked in the market. And let's take, just take it a step further on the S&P 500. Let's just look at the top five positions in the S&P 500. You go back to 1999, I said it seems like 1999. 1999, the top five companies represent 18% of that index. However, today it's 25%. Now it stayed up there for a while. That means that the, you know, people get more comfortable about the S&P 500 and want to invest more money in there, but they're setting themselves up because you have over uh, excess uh, concentration in the top five stocks. And go back to a blog that one of my colleagues here on the investment committee, Andrew Woodard, did about Bob Farrell and his 10 um, rules for investing. Number two, excess returns in one area go to excess returns in another. Third point, excess returns do not stay permanent. There is no new errors. So the S&P 500 getting these types of returns is not going to stay permanent forever. Look at what happened in 1999 when the market was 18% concentrated in the top five companies. Then look what happened over the next six years. And this is a chart that is looking at the factors of investing. And you can see here from 2000 to 2006, the S&P 500 was one of the worst performing areas. In other words, it was very easy for active managers to outperform the market after it was concentrated that everyone wanted to buy the S&P 500. Today, look where we are on the right. The S&P 500 has a, had an unprecedented run of outperformance. And we're seeing that a lot of parts of the market are being left in the dust while only five companies are driving the market. What that means is that those excess returns are going to revert back and other areas are going to outperform the market going forward. Let me just look at this again and the percentage of the companies beating the S&P 500 in the S&P 500. And this is why if you're going to use the S&P by equally weighted index instead of the market capitalization weighted index. Go back to that 2000 to 2005 era. You look at that time period, the majority of companies in the S&P 500 outperformed the S&P 500 indexes when it became concentrated in 1999. Look over to the right of this chart. You've had those eight years of basically the S most stocks underperforming the S&P 500. That's going to revert. We look at reversion to the mean here at Thor. And this is why we think the S&P 500 is the most expensive part of the market. Now, I look at excesses here and I talk about 1999. But just go back to the market update we did two weeks ago and look at the Thordex. And the Thordex here, we talk about it being expensive. But go back to 1997 and 1999, the market was even more expensive back then. So this means it could have, go on for a little bit longer, but then when the re reversion hits, it's going to be a little bit more dramatic. But what this is saying to us is overall is that yes, the market is expensive, especially the S&P 500, but all stocks are not as cheap as what they were back in 1999. When they were looking at this here, the, the Thordex getting close to 100 in 1997, 1998, 1999, you had small company stocks that were selling for five to six times earnings. They're not selling at that. They might be selling at 10 to 12 times earnings, still cheaper than the market, but they're not as cheap as what they were in 1999, which is part of the reason why we are underweight equities 
In total, we are significantly underweight in U.S. large companies, but the one area that we're looking at in the future that will be an investment is these small companies because we don't know if they're going to get as cheap as they were in 1997, but they're not selling at dirt cheap prices like they were back then. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, as always, reach out to us here at Thor Wealth Management at thorwealthmanagement.com or give us a call. Take care. Look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks.